we're going to talk a little bit about how theory or sociological theory perceives gender. I mean, we're going to sort of run through a variety of different perspectives because they sort of present different aspects of that. So um, functionalist perspectives largely sort of attributed to Talcott Parsons um, sort of work from this idea that there are essentially two types of tasks that need to be done in human societies and families in order to allow society and individuals to flourish. Okay, so for him, those tasks get divided into instrumental tasks and expressive tasks. And instrumental tasks are the kind of thing that are about, the, mm, the way that I often talk about them is to say that like, you can accomplish an instrumental task. This is about securing shelter, about sort of earning X number of dollars, um, and you can sort of reach a point where the the task itself is accomplished, okay? Um, and sort of instrumental tasks are often defined in that way. Um, classical examples of instrumental tasks include earning an income, okay? So bringing in resources into the family. They're generally done in relation to the outside world. So they're about the relationship between the family and sort of the outside world or sort of how like different groups in society interact. The expressive tasks are sort of the other piece of that, and expressive tasks, by and large, are about relationship. And in some ways, expressive tasks aren't ever really finished. Um, and the way, the best way for to explain that sort of thing is to sort of think about the act of parenting. Okay, and parenting is a part of parenting that we could we sort of discuss a lot of details, but part of parenting you might conceptualize as sort of like communicating to your child that they are loved. Awesome. We can probably agree that that is a thing parents should do. But parenting and that sort of aspect of parenting is absolutely an expressive task rather than an instrumental one because you can't look at your two at, at, at your three day old child and go, I love you and now consider that this task is done because what you're what you need to do is maintain that through a relationship and sort of through listening through talking through gift giving through all kinds of other interactions with your own child in order to make sure that they understand that and that their relationship is is healthy and sort of behaving the way you want it to and Parsons argues that those are actually very different ways of dealing with the world and that they are different skill sets and for that reason it is better for a family for a society to have people specialize in one set of tasks or the other because the skills that you need to be good at expressive tasks are not necessarily the same skills that you would use to be really good at instrumental tasks and trying to do both forces you to occupy sort of two different worlds and you're not really going to be as good at either of them. So Parsons idea is that you should specialize and you should have someone who does expressive tasks and someone who does instrumental tasks. And this typically, um, like that is the sort of neutral phrasing of that. Although I will sort of say that practically what he means there is, women do expressive tasks, men do instrumental tasks, although that's not sort of built into his ideas about specialization and like efficiency. So this idea of like, well, women do the expressive tasks and men do the instrumental tasks. Um, and that's, functionalists are often sort of criticized for being maybe a little bit conservative in their, in their sort of view, because for example, in terms of feminism, like for, for in terms of family and like women's participation, um, functionalists are the theorists who started talking about like women entering the workforce was really bad for society because it meant that they weren't performing enough of those expressive tasks so their children were growing up to be delinquents. Um, so there's some conversation there about sort of conservative ideas in that sort of space. Um, but it is also like an assumption about a binary that like instrumental and expressive tasks are the same. And there's lots of examples that we could pull from any number of spaces where they may not be, um, right? Like, if you are, are, are you working 
because you need to provide an income for your family or are you working to build like to show your child an example of what hard work and sort of setting goals and meeting them looks like because the activity itself might be the same but if we talk about it as earning an income then it's an instrumental task but if we talk about it as like how we build relationship and socialize our children in terms of like allowing them to develop into productive adult humans that's more likely to be an expressive task so like functionalists and parsons create this binary between instrumental and expressive tasks but much like a gender binary it doesn't necessarily respond to um sort of like people's everyday lived realities and the reality is is that because functionalism is a macro level theory the functionalists don't really care that it doesn't respond to everyone's individual realities um they're sort of their their, their comment would be like well we're looking at the broad general patterns um but just so you're aware that like just because you're like that doesn't fit how i live my life it doesn't necessarily mean that the theory isn't doing what it wants to be doing um I'm also going to talk a little bit about capitalism, which is sort of like the other side, um, because when you look at functionalism, um, you sort of see this idea of like differences between the genders um, and, and Parsons doesn't really talk about the idea uh, that we as a society tend to place more value on instrumental tasks than expressive tasks. Um, there's this idea that like anyone can be a parent um, and but that it's hard to earn a lot of money. And so there's all these kind of questions about how we value those tasks. And Parsons doesn't really dig into at all that sort of question about, hey, wait a second, different does not necessarily mean a hierarchy, doesn't necessarily mean that we think one of those things is valuable and one of those things is not valuable. Um, so there's a lot of sort of stuff in that. Um, conflict theory works from the premise that men's and women's experiences in society are, are different, or rather conflict perspective on sort of uh, gender is really connected to that idea um, and that's about the idea that like it works from a from a position that there are um, dominant positions and subordinate positions in society and you're sort of in one place or another and for sort of conflict a conflict look at gender the idea is that women occupy a subordinate position um, and that men occupy a dominant position in terms of gender relations. Um, but for conflict theorists, that gender relationship is not, it's an, it's an effect. It's not a cause. Um, and it is caused by the way that workers as a sort of broad category are exploited by um, sort of capitalism. So the idea there is that um, between workers and capitalists, capitalists occupy a dominant position and workers occupy a subordinate position. But since most of those workers are male, they then go home to their wives and children and reproduce those same dynamics, except for they reproduce them in a way where although they might be subordinate as workers to capitalists, they can become dominant in their own homes relative to their wives. Um, and so there's this whole Marxist argument about like extracting labor from women in the same way um, in that sort of men benefit from women's uncompensated labor in the home, all of that stuff we were talking about in terms of second shift, in terms of caregiving and that sort of stuff. Um, in the same way that capitalists exploit workers and sort of extract value from them. Um, and one of the consequences of that is that like really classically, like conflict perspectives sort of argued that gender discrimination and gender inequality would continue to exist as long as the exploitation of workers did. Um, so, you know, you have to fix capitalism before you resolve these sort of gender pieces. Um, and one of the things that I will sort of say about sort of conflict theory, like there's also there's all kinds of stuff about the relationship between capitalism and reproductive labor. Like we could do a whole long thing about that. We're just not going to right now. Um, in like a contemporary context, one of the things that is important to understand about conflict theory in particular um, is that when it was created, it was not specifically created to understand society. It had a, a large push towards creating and changing society and turning society into something better. Um, and that sort of emancipatory lens has meant that 
contemporary visions of, of conflict theory, right? Like if you look at Frederick, at like Engel, like that was, that was a very long time ago, like a couple centuries back, and we're still talking about it because it's still helpful to us, but um, in a contemporary context, like people who are writing today as conflict theorists on gender, um, keep that emancipatory idea, that idea about change, that idea about sort of resolving these inequalities. Um, and that means that conflict theorists are much more likely to sort of look at how gender interacts with race, with class, with sexual and gender, with, with sexual orientation, with any number of those other things than say functionalists are because they are looking at that sort of piece about emancipation. Um, there's a lot of stuff we could say about that. Um, conflict theory is really complicated, but we're not going to do a ton of it right now.